AMS is easily the most popular multicolor system around. It's affordable and reliable, but it's always been missing one thing, drying capability. But no more. We now have Sunlu's AMS heater, an add-on for your first generation AMS that heats up to 70 degrees and dries your PLA, PETG, TPU, and ABS. So let's check it out. So first of all, this simply replaces the top cover of your AMS. You just take off the lid and screw this on, and it comes with the screws. No instructions come with this because, well, I guess it's pretty obvious. It literally took less than two minutes. The heater is independently powered and controlled. It actually has a max operating power of around 390 watts, so sort of needs to be. It comes with a decently sized screen, which is the normal process value and set values that you see on other Sunlu drying units. In plain English, the current temperature and the selected temperature respectively. We have here a humidity reading and heating profiles for various filaments. And that's it, it's a dryer. Thanks for tuning in guys. Oh, that would be too easy, wouldn't it? Yeah, there's more. Okay, there are other AMS type devices out there like the Ace Pro for the Anycubic, which we have like right here. Of course, that's just really just for one printer and the power rating is 230 watts. Slightly lower powered, maybe. Most other AMS type devices actually just don't have a dryer, like the CFS doesn't have a dryer. This is higher powered and it has two big fans for air circulation. We also have a vent here for getting rid of that warm, moist air. Just remember to close it if you're storing filament in there after drying. For storage, there are also two slots for desk and packages. Actually, did the Ace Pro have a fan? I don't think so. So the Ace Pro does actually have fans buried somewhere in there. We're gonna have to do a test. There is nothing here for desiccant, unless you just wanna line the floor with silica gel. Okay, let's see how fast this thing heats up with our good friend, the Type K thermocouple. just a bit over 10 minutes for the unit to read 70 degrees when empty and closed and as you can see the thermocouple has a higher reading of almost 78 degrees. The dryer's thermistor is tucked away with the electronics so it is actually a bit isolated while the thermocouple is hanging in the air right in the middle of the box. Now we're gonna try this with a full load of mildly moist filament because I'm curious to see how well it can perform when the whole thing is loaded with wettish filament. But first we have to wait for this to cool down. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, with a full load of filament, we got just over 15 minutes on the unit's thermistor. And at that time, the thermocouple is almost at 69 degrees. Okay, so it can go up to 70 degrees. What does that mean for filament compatibility? PLA, PHG, TPU, ABS, totally fine. Nylon is right on the lower range. So if you're the type to print nylon or other high depth materials, you might be better off with this beast. This is also from Sunlu and goes up to a whopping 110 degrees. I don't print nylon much, but if you're familiar with nylon, you'll know that in most cases, you pretty much need to dry it every time before using it. Okay, back to the AMS heater. So what I do really like about this is that technically you can use this as standalone. I mean, what I mean is that you could design your own spool holder that fits snugly into the actual lid that is the heater. I mean, this isn't tied to the AMS. It's completely independently controlled and powered. I wonder, could you actually mod it onto something like the CFS? Drowning in AMS units. I mean, it's pretty similarly sized. Next project, maybe? Unlike the original AMS lid, which is curved like that. This is totally flat on top. So, I mean, technically you could add another AMS, just stack it on top with another dryer as well. Uh, but then it might be difficult to actually change filament in the bottom unit. Hmm. If you do have your printer and AMS tucked into a small space, then watch out because this is slightly taller than the original AMS with the lid. The unit itself is about 130 millimeters tall, and with the AMS, the combined total height is just under 250 millimeters when closed. And when it's open, it is just under 400 millimeters. 
So if you have your set crammed in somewhere, maybe measure first. There is also a humidity monitoring mode. So if the humidity goes over 50%, it will automatically switch on and then turn off when it goes down to 20%. 50% seems a bit high for constant monitoring, but you can change this if you wish. So we need some good old fashioned empirical testing. When we tested the poly dryer last year, we did a test where we placed a moist sponge inside for two hours at the PLA setting. We waited before and then after to see how well it can dry, and we compared this to the Sunlu S2 dryer. I think we got this idea from ModBot. We're doing the exact same thing again. Uh, in fact, I even have the same sponge. So it was 9.8 grams when moist just before putting it in the dryer, and now it is 6.26 grams after two hours of heating at 60 degrees. This is better than both the poly dryer and the Sunlu S2. But come on, that's not testing it. This has space for four spools. It's higher powered and it has two big fans. Let's up the ante. So we're doing the same test again, but with four sponges, same weight, same size. Here's what we got. Actually, even better results here. So in the first test, I put the sponge on the far side, but in this one, obviously they're evenly spaced. And on the perimeters, you can see that the performance is not quite as good, but in the middle, it is really good. Even the perimeter sponges have better results than both the poly dryer and the S2. Alternatives to this, of course, would be the AMS2 Pro, which is compatible with the first generation Bamboo Lab printers as well. However, it's not quite as high in max temp as this, and it's a little more expensive as well. Uh, you could also get the new iBoss Tetris and Dias dryers. They look interesting, but also not quite as high a max temperature as this. Thanks for checking out our video, guys. If you have any questions on the Sunlu AMS heater, then let us know down below, or you can continue the conversation on Discord. The link for that is also down below. We'll be back with another video next week. So until then, later.